welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my home. I'm sitting over here on part of what I would say is an extended stockpile, a new area in my kitchen. My kitchen's very small. So I'm being very creative with what I do and um, trying to prepare for the fall and winter and just stocking up and all that good stuff. But I wanted to talk to you tonight about your refrigerator and your freezer. Let's get down to some dirty business. So here you got to see some pictures of my refrigerator and freezer. And I have to laugh because I, you know, if I went to your house and opened your refrigerator, I have had so many of you say to me, oh my goodness, your refrigerator looks like mine. I don't know. Like we clean it and I'm like go crazy over wanting things just so and lined up and all that. And then I go to work and 10 days, two weeks, three weeks go by and I'm like, oh my word, it's like totally pulled out. But we are a super busy family and even if you're not a super busy family, you know, life just takes over sometimes and things happen. So one lesson I am strongly learning and I am on this big campaign. I'm on a new campaign and a new journey. And I mentioned that in a couple of my videos, I am taking back my home. I'm tired of my home taking and running the show. And every area, um, I have different areas in my life that I'm working through and trying to get better at and be a little bit more discerning on how I do things. But one is my refrigerator and freezer. It's been <clears throat> a thorn in my side on organiza organizational things. And I've watched people who organize their refrigerators to perfection. My problem is I am not home all day. And by the time I come home, it's grab, quickly make dinner, put leftovers away, hit the road running, blah, blah, blah. So I need to come up with a system that will work for me. So that is one thing I'm working on. The other thing I'm working on is also learning to be guilt-free. And some of you are gonna disagree, some of you will agree. Um, there comes a point where enough is enough, and I've said that before. There comes a point where there's something in your freezer or your refrigerator, let's say freezer, I know I will never use. I will never use it. It looks maybe kind of funny or it's frostbitten or maybe it's whatever. If it's perfectly fine, I can pass it on. But there are things in the freezer that every time I clean it out, I just move it to a different spot. I don't know, anybody else do this? I know there are because you guys gave great feedback. And you know, it's kind of like after a while, it's like, Lynn, the reality is you're not going to eat this thing and it's going to sit here till the cows come home and just get rid of it. Like, just be done, move on. And I think there's a lot of things in life that, you know, you just have to learn to let it go and move on. And whether you've made a mistake or you made a poor choice or things just happened, life happened, it's, it is what it is. And I said, you know what? I went in this time and I... I got my phone out. If you don't have the Cozy, C-O-Z-I app, I love Cozy app. I use it for to-do list, for shopping list, and I use it for my calendar. I still use a paper planner for a lot of things, but I love this for a lot of reasons. You can get it for free or you can get the fancy schmancy one and you can pay for it, I go free. But I went in and I went in and in my Cozy, I made a list of the top of my freezer and I cleaned it out thoroughly. And I went through things I know I'm not gonna use. I just took stuff over to my job and I blessed people with some things. I had a girlfriend come over and I gave her some stuff and gave stuff to my mom. And I got rid of one or two things. I didn't get rid of a ton. And no, I don't like throwing food out. So don't think this is a habit of I'm telling you just, oh, throw it out. These were things that were beyond, I'm not gonna eat it enough is enough, get rid of it, and make room for the things that I really need to store. And the same with the refrigerator. I went in there, I decided what was not good, cleaned it out, reorganized it, and 
I'm going to come back and show you one or two things at the end of the video of what I did to reorganize it. Then I did my chest freezer. Oh my word. If you have a chest freezer, next time I buy a freezer, it will be an upright lesson learned. A chest freezer is like a woman's pocketbook. Okay. It all goes to the bottom and you can never find it. And there were things that I know I purchased and I'm like, I, maybe we ate it. I didn't remember eating it. So we took everything out and it's not a big chest freezer. I don't know. It's probably this, maybe not the smallest, but the next size up. It's small. I keep it in my refrigerator, next to my refrigerator in my tiny kitchen. So, you know, it's a tiny freezer because my kitchen's not that big. And we took everything out of the freezer, everything reorganized it, sorted it, and we put bins in there. And my husband was ingenious on how he, my husband can pack anything. We put all the newer stuff in the bottom, brought the older stuff up to the top, put the meats in one area. We put the things that I use for dog food in another area. And there's certain cuts of meat and things like that I buy for our dog. That's in another area for when I make my homemade dog food. We put veggies in another area and so on. And on top of it, I still had room by the time we got done. And the funny thing is, I just tried Butcher Block. Butcher Block? Is that? Butcher Box, I think is the name of it. For the first time, I had a 50% off coupon code from another YouTuber that I had to use by July 31st. Then I had a 20% off for being a newbie. I got 70% off this box. You know what meat cost? I took advantage of 70% off and got one box. I'm gonna try it. I wanted to see what I got in it. Do I like the cuts of meat? Do I like it for that price? I tried it, but I didn't realize that, I don't know what I was thinking. I, you know, my freezer's full. So that's one of the reasons we took everything out. We got all the ice out of it, wiped it down, did a great job. So the butcher box meat went to the bottom. The other meats that I had came to the top. And here's my conclusion. And you're gonna hear this from every YouTuber that's a prepper, that is a stockpiler, and just everyday people who are like me that don't classify as either one, that money in your your refrigerator and your freezer is like having money in the bank i have meat and i have produce and i have food and i got those at the cost of whatever i paid for say yesterday a month ago six months ago maybe a year ago whatever the case might be that are now in my fridge and my freezer you know the cost of food now what it is well i paid the price yesterday's price and i'm eating it at today and into the future the other thing is, I had somebody say, oh, a package of hamburgers at one of our um, our delis, that a really nice butcher deli. She said it was like, I don't know, uh, let's see. It would have come out to about $3 a patty, but they're thick patties and they're big patties. And the meat is delicious. And she's a single person and she was saying it costs too much money. And I said, well, not denying that it costs money, but I said, you know, if you were to go to McDonald's and what you would pay for a burger, that the patty is so thin you can almost see through it versus this patty that's $3 and it's gonna give you a good meal. I said, as a matter of fact, the patties are so big you could cut them in half and you can, instead of getting four, you would really get eight and you can add a side salad to it or some rice and bulk it up. She's like, I never thought of that. I said, so really it would only cost you $1.50 a patty and you're not gonna get a good patty at any fast food restaurant. One of the things I know is that this food that I have in my pantry, freezer and fridge, I have been blessed with, whether it's through me purchasing it in my paycheck or it was a gift from a friend or I have that food swap, I know I've been blessed and I need to start eating more diligently at home and use up what I have before we consider ordering out or consider and doing any other choices. And I just want to remind you, organization is a key to saving money. One of the things I did this week is I picked up a few essentials. I needed milk, I needed butter, I needed bread, and I thought, oh, I need cream cheese because my son wants homemade chicken Alfredo. Lynn, first of all, I have a grocery list, a master grocery list, and it's even on my blog, and it's a free printable if you want it. Duh, why am I not using my own list? And I just sort of went from memory and I bought cream cheese, which we certainly can use and freeze to find 
that I had two or three other blocks in the refrigerator already. Lesson learned. So I used one of them up and I made sausage casserole. We used up a sausage, I used up a crescent roll, I used up my cream cheese. We had breakfast for two days. It was a good thing. Money is tight, budgets are tight, food is expensive, life is expensive, but you know what? I talked the other day, how do you live positive in a negative world? You have control of, over your kitchen. You are the owner of that refrigerator and that freezer. You are the owner of that food that's in there. You're the CEO, I think Jan from New York City said, you're the CEO of your own kitchen and you could be the CEO of your own menu planning and the food that you have. Use your food wisely, use it carefully, stretch it, eat every bite. You have leftovers, if you don't wanna eat it right away, make sure you freeze it. Learn how to freeze things properly, get proper containers. Don't just wrap it in some plastic wrap and think it's gonna be fine. Learn how to do that. There's plenty of help out there for doing that. One other thing I wanna show you, if you remember my beautiful basket that I got for a dollar at a thrift store, but I have some newspapers in, in here, but I had seen on, on, and I don't know if it works, so if you've ever done this, let me know. But it's my basket of potatoes, and I have some that you can see, but they say you wrap the potatoes in newspaper, and then you put them in the basket. And then I have some other potatoes that I will be using very soon. So I have put my potatoes in there, and I'm wrapping them in newspaper, and I just got another bag of potatoes last night from an event I went through where uh, I went with a friend and we went through this thing and long story short, I'm not gonna get into it right now, but we got some free food. So potatoes I grabbed, we have company coming over for dinner on Monday. So I'm gonna be making a shepherd's pie. So I'll use those potatoes. And if you're wondering where my video is on canning onions and carrots, It'll be coming up at some point down the road only because I had so many carrots given to me and so many onions. I don't have the time to can it. I have no room in my refrigerator. Enough is enough. I decided to bless two friends of mine, just called them up and said, hey, can I come over? Gave them some apples, some, what did we give them, Graham? Apples and, I don't remember, onions, onions and carrots. I don't know, there were some other produce and some canned goods and things that I've been blessed with. In that food swap, I keep telling you, swap with friends. Passed it on, bless them. They were thrilled to bits. One person over in this person's home that I actually went, with the place I went to give it to them, she's in a real tough spot financially and it was just like, oh, what a blessing. So that's what I'm all excited about. So let me bring you over to my refrigerator and freezer real quick and show you what I've done there to make a difference with organizing. But I really want to encourage you, be positive. We can do this. We are taking back our kitchens, even if it's the refrigerator, and we are going to get it cleaned up. We're going to use our food wisely. We're going to eat better. We're going to eat healthier. We're going to eat at home. We're going to do all the right things. And we're going to be a better person for it. We're going to be healthier for it. So I do have a video up and coming on a new ice machine that I wanna show you guys and I got a coupon code for you. So keep your eyes open for that. And I've got a bunch of other things up and coming. So let me bring you over to the refrigerator and we'll close with that. Okay, so here's my freezer. I'm gonna go over this quickly with you. I got some of these bins from the Dollar Tree. They have handles, you can pull them out. I have put in here all vegetables. Here is miscellaneous things like pierogies and some other things. I have meats over here. In this one, I have cheeses. And then some things were filled in on the top just as I had space. One thing I love is using rubber bands, just like that, you can see. I don't like clips because they tend to fall off. And these are chips that are all crumbly at the bottom of the bag that nobody will wanna eat. But I save those and I can freeze them. And you can use them on casseroles and I'm going to be making my cream peas and tuna for my husband, he requested that on this week's menu. But in case for some reason I don't get to it, the chips can stay in the freezer and yes, you can freeze potato chips. My son has a hard time obviously looking through this for where his goodies are. So I have made a little tray for him. He can slide it out and his things are here. And as you can see, I put the rubber band around the little things here so things don't fall out. 
We have some breads and other things here. I have blocks of cheese in here. I put them on top of the soup. It just was an easier fit. And then I have homemade soup in containers. This is now well organized. Cheese, vegetables, miscellaneous meat, stuff for my son, breads and soups. Now I can go in there, I can see what I have. I made that list on Cozy, we are good to go. Let me show you the refrigerator. Okay, so here I've done something different. This container here has all different ketchups and mayonnaise and all those things you get when you do take it. I put that in here. I've also put another bin here that I can slide out. These are things, meats that maybe I've taken out of the freezer or that type of thing that I want to use in this week's menus. The same thing goes for here. This is meats and things that I'm using right now, this week to create. I have a nice plastic tray like this with some condiments on it. I can slide back in. And then we put these plastic drawers in here, these bins. This one is cheese and deli meat and things like that. My eggs fit perfectly in the middle here. And then this one has leftovers. So I have a bin for leftovers as well as, see if I can bring you down a little bit more. I know the angle's a little weird, but I have another drawer of leftovers. There's soup. There is one sausage. There's some sausage casserole. There's a piece of stromboli. There's whatever in here. And then I know when I've put this stuff in here and I'll tell them I'm not cooking dinner. I'm not making lunch until the leftovers are gone. We have now lined up way at the bottom here. Our breads are lined up here. I had six eggs left over that I couldn't fit. I'm going to, I left it here just so that I can make hard boiled eggs. We've got our milk and our juices lined up here. I've got in the bottom, I have a veggie drawer. On the other side, I have yogurts and things like that. So there you go. But the best thing I did were the leftover tray here, the leftover tray here, and adding this drawer here. Everything has a place. And now I don't have to be hunting. Where are the leftovers? They're not shoved in the back of the refrigerator. They're in drawers. I know what I have. And then the foods that I want to use up ASAP for recipes are all right here in these two trays. I'm absolutely thrilled with this new look. Hope you enjoyed this quick video. We'll catch you all on the next video.